Alright, listen, mate. Three strikes are out at the old ball game. Okay, no, sorry. Um, the Reds won back-to-back -back game, so I'm just, like, in a good mood right now because of that. But with that being said, though, Bleach Your Boy posted a couple days ago a logical take about Sam Hubbard, right? Then they posted a logical take about overrated players. Now, this is the third strike, okay? I know technically the first one wasn't a strike, but this is the third one, okay? That's what I'm looking at, Bleacher Report. You got three here. Six NFL free agents contracts that will prove to be the biggest value in 2024. Okay. Personally speaking, right, for us, I think Trent Brown will end up being the biggest, well, I'll say on offense, let's break down, right? Trent Brown's free agent. I think he will be the best value overall wise just because the fact that we're protecting Joe Burrow for the whole entire season. And for how much he's costing us, he's costing us absolutely nothing. I mean, we got him for like, what, a $4 million contract? And he's a starting caliber right tackle. Zach Moss, I think, is very much up there. Um, he's costing us absolutely nothing as well. Um, defensively, Sheldon Rankin's really good. Um, who else? Geno Stone. We also picked up Von Bell. Von Bell, I think, is probably the best. He is the best value for what we're getting back. It's close, actually. It's very close between Von Bell and, um, what's his name? Von Bell and Geno. Um, not Geno. And Trent Brown. I think it's very, very close there. Uh, other than that, though, Mike is also up there as well. Uh, I'm going to say Trent Brown, number one, and number two is Von Bell. For value purposes-wise, that's what I will say. Now, this is not just about the Bengals, by the way. This is just six players in general. But because Bleach Your Point, Bleach Your Point, I just have a feeling they're probably going to include us in some way. Number one, Russell Wilson. I don't think this is wrong. Um, I, well, I think Justin Fields is better than Russell Wilson. I think they're going to eventually go to Justin Fields, the Steelers wise. I don't think this is a bad value. I mean, you're getting a starting caliber quarterback, arguably, you know, not the greatest, but still starting. And in return, you're spending pretty much nothing. I mean, you're paying him, what, like, league minimum, and then the Broncos are paying him $40 million just to go ahead and have him as your starting quarterback. You're literally getting a guy for free. And because he can technically start for you and be a startable asset in your offense, yeah, in theory, it's not a bad deal at all, right? So, okay, I, I agree with that, Blade Report. I don't think it's illogical. Number two, Zach Moss, Cincinnati. Yeah, you know, again, as I said, you know, he is on my list of free agents. He probably is number three. He's a very good value for what we paid. We paid pretty much nothing. We're getting a guy that can pass block at a very high elite level. He's a great in-between-the-tackles type of guy. Not really a pass catcher, but that's okay because we have Chase Brown to be more of a pass catching back anyway. Yeah, no, it's a... For the, again, for the amount of value, the money you're spending, it's an amazing deal. Um, I will say, though, if I'm going to have to put the other guys up there, I put them a little higher, you know, with Von Bell and Trent Brown. And even Mike, I think Mike's a little bit lower than um, Zach Moss. But, okay, yeah, I don't have a problem with this at all. Um, again, with the Zach Moss uh, situation also, um... It's kind of like they're also doing each position. They're doing quarterback, running back, wide receiver. So that's another thing. Um, so running back, Zach Moss is the best value, which I agree. Wide receiver, Tyler Boyd. Oh, that hurts so bad. That hurts so bad to see. I'm not ready. You know when they say too soon? This is too soon, man. Uh, yeah, Tyler Boyd. He's a great value for Tennessee Titans. I'll agree with that. They gave him an incentive-based contract, and he's in very much... I mean, they're they're winning with this contract with him, and man, it sucks. It really sucks to, to see that he is no longer on our team, and he is on another team. But you know what? I wish him well with Brian, and hopefully things work out for him. But 
Yeah, no, I agree. They got him on a really good contract. And, you know, going into the offseason, he won a one-year $9 million deal. That ended up not working out. And now he's going to get paid what he's going to get paid. But, yeah, no, I mean, this is a really good deal for him. Lake and Thomason. Okay. Again, I don't... Um, they cut him. I don't think Lakin Thompson is that amazingly great, personally speaking wise. So I'm not going to really give my th opinion on this. I don't really know too much about Lakin Thompson. Um, he's 138 starts under his belt. How much did they pay him? He agreed to a minute school one year, $1.2 million. Wait, what? Tell me this one. Why did we not sign him? Even as a backup. Maybe we tried to, but that's another thing that I kind of keep I keep, to, uh, keep in consideration. Is that just because, like, players are out there and they sign for nothing contracts, it doesn't mean that, you know, we could have signed them. And what I mean by that is some players want to be starters. Like, some players do not want to go out there and be backups. And I kind of lose track of that sometimes. I, I think a lot of football fans do. Where it's like, oh my, we could have signed that guy for that money. It's like, well, no, he wanted to sign for that money, but he also wanted to be a starter. And we have a starter at that said position, so it wouldn't work out. Um, so I got to keep that in mind. Sometimes, you know, we kind of forget about that as football fans. DJ Reader. Oh, this is too soon. What the heck, Bleacher Report? Like, these are all logical picks, and I give you props on that. You actually did a really good job on this. But, like, these are all picks that really hit me in the heartstrings, bro. Like, you didn't have to, you know, go for the low blow here. They just went for, like, the Mortal Kombat finish him. Like, bro. Okay, yeah. DJ Reed, a great value. I agree. As long as he can come back from injury and he's 100% healthy from injury, he's going to be one of the best. But, again, it comes down to him coming back from injury. And that's something I think that the Bengals really did not trust. Was that he would come back from injury 100%. Jordan Poyer. He's older man. He's definitely older. Um, Yeah I mean. He emerged as one of the best safeties. During his seventh season with Buffalo. And I agree he was one of the best. He's just an older veteran uh, guy. Um, and we're going to see how he blossoms. They got him for a good contract. But again yeah it comes down to uh, age. How old is Jordan Poyer actually? I believe, I want to say he's like 34. Maybe not. 33, okay. Yeah, he's 33. It's just age at this point. But, guys, tell me down below your thoughts and opinions. Because Bleacher Report actually made logical points. And, you know, lightning doesn't strike twice in the same location on six occasions. Guys, I'll see you guys in the next one.